All right. Again, how y'all doing? What? All right. We'll keep working on that. I don't know. I feel like it was, <laughs> sorry. Just teasing. I know I'm doing great. Great. You doing great? Uh, as great as can be. And you slept four hours like I did? On, a, on average, three hours, 45 minutes, but four hours. <laughs> I, I slept into yesterday. Okay. Yeah. I didn't. And here I am. All right. Let's do this. All right. So, um, Good, good afternoon, everybody. Glad to have you all here. My name is Awate. Uh, I'm the VP of Enterprise Data Governance and Privacy Engineering at Capital One. And um, uh, what I do at Capital One generally entails making sure that uh, your, all of our customers' data is used responsibly. That includes things like data, um, data quality checks, um, making sure that the data is of the utmost quality possible, uh, includes things like removing sensitive information from our data and also complying with all of our privacy regulations and laws. Um, but listen, enough about me for like a hot second. Maureen, <laughs> why don't you tell us what you do? By the way, we work together and we just have so much fun. So I'm trying to be serious, but um, <laughs> it's all good. Uh, so nice to meet you. My name is Maureen. I work at Capital One and I'm the head of diversity, inclusion and belonging, which is a recently new role. I'm also a divisional CIO for People Tech. So think about all the work um, you do and the technology that enables that work. Uh, we provide that. So we call it People Tech to make sure it's human centered design. Happy to be here. Awesome. Well, with that introduction, Maureen, I, I would love to hear from you on your perspective how can leaders um, support innovation? Since we're talking about innovation here, right? I'm in the right room? Okay. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> how, how can leaders support innovation? Well, first, I, I think anyone can be innovative. You're naturally born to learn things, maybe do it a hundred times, and then overcome it, and it could be something brand new that others can use. So, just wanted to say that out loud. Um, but I do think, as leaders, including yourself, we have to be intentful. We have to take actions that are going to create the conditions or the environments for what we call innovation. And so that starts with psychological safety. I know you thought I was gonna say something else, but truly think about we are human beings who have different things going on in our lives and we come to work and we're told, be innovative, be smart, think outside the box. But at the end of the day, if you don't have psychological safety, you don't have trust. And if you don't have trust, how can you have the consistency and the relationship and the environment to be champion to be innovative? And so I did write down, um, a, a definition of psychological safety. So I'm gonna look at my phone for a minute. This is from Harvard Business Review. And it says, psychological safety is a belief that one will not be punished or humiliated for speaking up with ideas or questioning or raising concerns or making mistakes. So think about what it means to be a high performing team when you feel psychologically safe. I don't know if y'all been watching the NBA Finals. I have, and I'm a fan of Miami Heat right now, no judgment, because they, they, see, they appear to be a selfless team. And I'm looking at the interaction of the coach with the team, and you see them taking risks. And it's, it's pretty obvious to know when someone's feeling safe or not. Also, you can just feel it. You don't need to say it. So you can't assume psychological safety. It's an actual verb. So we as leaders need to always check in to make sure people feel safe for that moment before we start working. And I'm big on that. So I'm just gonna call out some conditions because again, um, I was reading this in Harvard Business Review. Think about what psychological safety looks like. You could just speak up and say, hey, I don't like this idea. And nothing happens, right? Or you could share an idea and just be like, okay, you didn't like that idea, but I got a better one. Like that challenge, that tough conversation made it a better idea. Or think about, you're about to take a calculated risk. I know her, I don't know him, but most of people are gonna like the idea, I'm saying the thing. And then you wait, right? Was that risk worth it, or do you feel like down the line something's gonna come back from that? And I know we're taking a minute before we get to the topic, but it is so important that we as humans see each other as humans. Because you can't do this alone. You can't be innovative and generate novel ideas or bold thinking without you first feeling right and that you're ready to be a high performer. Then we can start talking about the space and the conditions. And then the last thing I want to call out, I've written a couple of uh, blogs about this, and at Capital One, I'm proud to say we do this as well, is we want you to fail. Now, we want you to fail fast, 
in small, <laughs> you don't fail big, but the idea of failing forward is something that I just live my life by, and I think we need to always ask those questions before you raise your hand or say that thing or engage, otherwise we're not really being real true leaders providing that environment. I, I love what you said there, Maureen, about failing fast and failing forward. I, I think one of the things that we do as human beings, and we don't really realize that we're doing it um, from a really young age, is that we fail. We start off life by failing. That's we right. try to walk, and we fall down. And then we get up, and we fall down again. And then we get up, and we fall down again. But we're doing that so fast, and we're not, we're not like, like shaming ourselves for falling down. Like, you see babies, they fall down, like, it, unless they're, they're sh shocked or startled, they're probably giggling and getting ready to start walking again, so. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I just had a birthday, I turned 52, and I'm proud of it. I earn every year. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm a lefty, so I'm very clumsy. So I was falling last week, <laughs> a couple, and I say this because it's okay to have laughter, it's okay to bring comedy into that failure, because that allows you to keep trying, it doesn't feel bad. And so that is the beginning. I tell you, you cannot go forward and be bold and be strong if you don't feel safe, right? So I appreciate you calling out that falling. I, I have a lot of scars to prove it. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn the table on you because one of the things that um, I want to make sure that we are doing is creating a safe space. So I talked about the mindset and the feeling, yeah. but let's be real, like what does the space look like? How do you create it as a leader? I, I think, um, you know, for one, you have to be really intentional about innovation, right? It's, it happens by way of necessity, but it also happens by way of intentionality. Um, one of the things I, I forgot to mention when I was introducing myself, mm -hmm. I also lead the Data Innovation Sandbox at Capital One. So, you know, that, that is a little bit of that creating that space and that physical environment, but also that, um, um, intellectual and cultural environment where you can come and fail fast. You can experiment with data. You can try out new and interesting things uh, with data. I see Eric in, in, the, in the room there as our chief data architect. I'm just gonna call him out for five minutes. Oh, Eric. <laughs> but you know, it, Eric is thinking about building a whole new um, architecture for Capital One. Just think about that for a second, right? Um, to have the space to try those things and know that some may work out, some may not work out is, is, is important. But for Eric to know like, oh man, I, I, I know the, the team at, at uh, the Data Innovation Sandbox, they got my back, allows them that space to not worry about that and think about some other things that are really amazing. Um, so number Ooh. one, mm -hmm. the space. Uh, number two, the culture. Right? At Capital One, we have this thing called um, Invest in Yourself Fridays. Right, where you actually create an environment where associates can go in and really, quite frankly, do what they want to do. <laughs> Whatever but, they want. But, but what, what we've noticed is that they actually take that time and sometimes do what we call side of desk work. And some amazing innovation comes from that side of desk work. And, and it's, this might seem accidental, it's not. Right? The culture, the psychological safety, the environment actually fosters that kind of innovation to happen. And because that's not enough, um, we also do, a, particularly within um, uh, the Innovation Sandbox and, and my, my group at Capital One, we do 10% in innovation time. Like it's really deliberate, take 10% of your time and you're not working on that project or that PowerPoint deck or, no, take 10% of your time and actually be very deliberate about driving new innovations and come inventing new things. And um, uh, I'm really proud of, of, of the, the things that have come out of that 10% time just in my short eight months here at Capital One. Um, I'm, gonna I'm gonna touch on one more thing and yeah. then I'll, I'll, I'll turn back. Um, we also do, um, very deliberately, we also do things like datathons and hackathons. Sounds similar, they're not. Datathons is the, the raw product is data, the output is data. But the fuel is innovation, right? You're, you're trying to create some new output or some new, some new and interesting way to, to use data or to show insights that no one was thinking about before. 
Um, hackathons do the exact same thing, but they end up with new applications and whatnot. So, a again, I just, I just want to, I, I just want to call out those things um, out loud, just to kind of answer your question about what is it that we have to do to be. To, to create an environment for innovation. You know, and I love the concept of data -thon. I had never heard of it until this year when you showed up on the scene and said, we're doing data -thons. And we're like, okay, whatever that is. And now <laughs> it's fire. Like everyone's like, so you're saying we could think about data and produce or stop producing data that's not useful. I, I actually think that simple idea is quite brilliant. Yeah. I also want to go back to that invest in yourself day, yeah. which I personally take, and we mean it. You can do whatever you want. You can go for a walk for nine hours for that day, or you can just talk to one person. You can call, check in on family. And why we do that invest in yourself day is during the pandemic, it was obviously a lot going on then, and now we're post-pandemic. And there's still some lessons to be learned around we had quality time also with our family, or we had just quiet time. As an introvert, I loved my time on my couch and my two cats. My husband didn't, but my cats did, right? And I say this where everyone decides what does recharging looks like, or what is creating space to actually have that bold idea yeah. safely be tried, tested, and talked about. So just having that infrastructure matters, so thank you for calling out the, the space. And I'll just take a few moments and shout out the uh, really broader Capital One um, community um, through one of our data thons that we just did, our very first one, by the way, um, uh, in May. Uh, are we still in May? Last month. June is um, still in my <laughs> So we just did our very first one. And out of that came some pieces of innovation that um, you know have led us to discover how we can um, identify duplicative data company. Now that sounds like a small uh, thing, but when you start thinking at the Capital One scale, that turns out to be millions of dollars in savings. Imagine that. Just a, a, a group of people came together and they said, wow, this, I wonder if, I wonder <laughs> if we could. And, and that, that turned out to be millions of dollars. Uh, yeah, saving $4 million or $5 million is a good idea too, but yeah, yeah. I, love, I love the setup. So I, I have one more for you and then we're gonna kind of really yeah. do it back and forth. So we talked about having the condition yeah. with the right leaders and the right mindset. Yes. And, but we also talked about failure, right? And failing forward. Um, you were telling me you have a word for failure. What do you call it? Fearlier. I, I'm, I, I'm a former stutterer, so I'm already trying, like, fear is that what you're saying? That's exactly right. Y'all want to try that with me? One, two, three. fear -lier. Not easy. Try one more time. It's okay uh, to fail. fear -lier. It's really, it's okay to fail. So tell us about that. I love so, it. Um, thank, thank you for that setup, Maureen. Um, so, in terms of, like, barriers for innovation, there's no one greater barrier than fear. There's really no one greater barrier than fear. Ah, uh, is it going to work? Mm, I don't know, you know, it's, it, it doesn't seem like a good idea. It, it maybe is a good idea to me, but it, you know, is, is Eric gonna think of me differently and you know, I don't know, right? So fear mm -hmm. is, a, it's a more powerful motiv motivator to not do something than, you know, perhaps even monetary motivation sometimes, right? So finding that, that ability to know where that limit is where if your, your instincts are saying, ooh, this is the barrier, let's stop here, and pushing beyond that just a little bit, just so that increment to go over the edge is, is where most innovation sits. It's where self-driving cars come from. It's where rockets to Mars come from, right? It's looking for that barrier and saying, okay, this is where everyone says is the speed limit. What, what if? What if it's not the speed limit, it's just, you know, um, what society says it is, right? Uh, I, I, I'm gonna share one example that goes way back in time. Uh, before Uber, before Uber was a thing, there was a company um, uh, called Transit Go that I, mm. is an idea that I had, I had formulated in the back of my mind. It was really simple. I was, I was traveling a lot back then. I'm still traveling a lot today, <laughs> uh, so that hasn't changed. And I, I, you know, just going to and from the airport, I, you know, I would take super shuttle and all those things. And I was, there's got to be a better way to to do this, right? And um, I came up with this idea, I called it Transit Go, and I said, like, how, wh wh why can't we, like, um, get, in, get in cars and just kind of, like, share our rights? And I killed that idea myself, and I watched that idea become Uber, like, five years later. Mm. 
Never let fear stop you from innovating. You should talk to my husband. Every idea, he's like, that was my idea. And I'd be like. <laughs> Remember, he invented the Fitbit 10 years ago. He keeps reminding me. I'm like, but it's over now. Like, you know, you got it. But that's another story. Now, and by the way, I love talking to Brother Hour because this is how it is. High bandwidth, energy, and inspiration. But I want to go back to that barrier point. You know, as a black woman in America, I always tell people, I know what barrier looks like. I do it every day. But it's not in a glib way. It's in a inspirational, like, you already are capable yes. of overcoming those barriers. Yes. And I always like to call out, also since we're in tech, a lot of the history of blacks in tech, I highly encourage you to do some research. If you spend one hour in your life the next week, you will come out like being like, I had no idea. Oh, you'll have that hidden figures moment, I promise you. And you'll be, then you hopefully get over that. Yeah. And then you realize a lot of the technology we do today comes from the diaspora or from yes. Africa or other brown people or people who we may not have been credited in patent sense, but we're using now. I'm talking about tablets, Wi-Fi, et cetera. Yes. Right? And when you learn that and you know who you are, then whenever a barrier comes in, there's going to be fear. So that's definitely tr happening. But I always think of the word courage. And so every time I think about how I overcome something, either it's being a mom or being in corporate America or going to that meeting to pitch that idea, yeah. um, it's, I'm still going to be fearful. I'm still going to have that crippling maybe lack of safety feeling, but the difference is, is who's around me. Yeah. And the difference is the, the calculated risk I took in saying the probability of me failing is 40%, I'm not doing that one. But there's a 60% chance that I could win, I'm gonna take a shot, right? And so are you taking that shot? And again, we are the ones who create innovation. I said it earlier, you're already innovative. You just need to hear it, and then you need to step into it. I love that word, courage. Um, Courage is not the absence of fear. That's right. Courage is pushing with fear to do the, to do the thing, run into the burning building and pull humans out. Um, go and say out loud to a group of people, let's do a data innovation sandbox and be quiet and see what they say. You, know, you never know. They might say yes. In this case, they did. Right. And I have a question for the audience. How many of y'all, or how many of you are inventors, have patents? One in the back, two. All right, let's give it up for those folks. And, and it's not to call you out to make you feel bad, it's to let you know there are inventors in the room and you're also already an inventor. You just haven't, like my husband done, followed through maybe. Because we all have ideas, am I right? And so if you have ideas, you just gotta test it out and do the research and I always say, bring a friend, bring a posse, so that you can continue to try and test and fail forward. You know, I have several patents, but I got, I got a feeling you have more than I do. Tell me about your recent experience, because I want to obviously compete and compare. But yeah, go ahead. That's a fair <laughs> point. All right, so I'm going to frame my, my recent experience in the, in the Capital One sense of things. So I, as I mentioned earlier, I've been at Capital One for eight months. Um, and just recently, like fresh off the press, um, was able to file uh, a patent for a, a piece of work that I'm working at at Capital One that is original, um, solves problems that other companies in big tech are, are not solving and um, the, that's not even the best part about this, this story Maureen. the best part about this story was I didn't have to hire a lawyer I didn't have to spend hours, days, weeks they made the process so easy that um, I want to file my next patent right mm. through this process and it's just it, cap, the, the Capital One group that handles our patents is an organization called One Patent and they take all I mean all of the complexity out of it. You just have to come and say, this is the idea that I have. Um, I think it might work in my bomb, but I, I, there's a good chance it might work. And like, okay, we got it from here. Give us the, the, the tech specs and we got it from here. So. I love um, that. It was, a, it was a really wonderful experience. You got pants too, no? Yeah, I teed up no, so I can no. tell you about my patent. Oh, it was just because okay, right. I'm very competitive. <laughs> so, um, you know, I've had patents before as well. I've been at Capital in four years. And that was very difficult. And if you were an entrepreneur, individual contributor, it would be in the tens of thousands to get a patent submitted. That's right. And so recently, about two weeks ago, because I'm always like, who all, you know, who's all willing to share ideas with me? I pulled a quick group together. I'm talking about 15 minutes. And I submitted a patent. And then the lawyers came back and said, actually, this patent is spawning more patents. Yes. And I had no idea or clue, because clearly I didn't think about my idea 
clear enough, but why I say this is we also do a lot of hackathons and then we have the patent team there with us to help us tag and credit that idea, not just have it and just have it kind of phase away with the wind. And I say this because we encourage our admins, we encourage anyone, project managers, you don't have to be a technology person to still be an inventor. And that was one of the things I want to get across. And of course, you know, we're going to wrap up, but the other thing I want to say again, you all have ideas, you're already inventors, you just got to step into that courage and take a couple of steps and then bring a posse, a friend, a tribe, a club, whatever it takes, and then use your work construct or other partnerships to help you get that idea to life. You will feel better about it, and you won't be like my husband, my couch always reminding me of every idea he ever invented. <laughs> so I had to call that out. Go ahead. Well, I'll, I'll, in closing, I'll, I'll just I'll echo similar um, uh, um, feelings and just say, um, I, I think, Mario, you mentioned this uh, uh, earlier when we were having a conversation. There's so many people here. There really is so many people here, and they all came to get something out of this, right? right. So the, the hope is that you come here, you, you're, not, you're not trying to go back the same way you, you came, if not, you know, it was just a fun trip to Atlanta. The hope is that you came here and you learned something new and you take it home with you. Now, I, I'm not, I don't know that I'm gonna be dropping a whole bunch of pearls of wisdom here, but I certainly do hope that um, when you go home, you would remember that necessity is the mother of all inventions. That's right. When you are in the, in, in the face of necessity, suppress your initial instinct of running the other direction and ask yourself the question, is there an opportunity here to innovate? Um, I, uh, I'll, I'll leave you guys with this example. Um, how many of you in here know, know what Zimride is by show fans? Okay, I have one, I one yesterday. and a half, yeah. and we had three, right? So, uh, I'm, uh, if you can't tell from my very unique name, I'm from Africa, um, um, from specifically from Cameroon. Oh, oh hey, okay, okay, all right. You go, sister. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's um, the parts of Africa are, are, not, are not as wealthy as other parts of the world. And therefore, you know, you find necessity just everywhere. And you also find innovative, like, I mean, creative things that come out of that space. Um, one of those things happens to be Zimride. And Zimride is, takes the, the whole notion of not enough cars, but more people that want to get from A to B. Uh, and kind of like looks at the whole concept and says, How, well, why, why can't we share this car? Why can't we share this ride? We'll go there together. We'll make sure that the owner of the car is paid and fuel is put in the car. Um, well, Zimride eventually became what we now call Lyft. Hmm. Innovation came from, that, that particular piece of innovation came from Africa. I'm not saying that to, you know, Wakanda forever. I'm, 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 I, I, I'm, a, I can't do that. I'm, I'm saying that <laughs> mostly to point out that there was necessity there first, right. and that created innovation. Run towards the, uh, a problem with the idea of asking yourself the question: How can I innovate here today? Hmm. So hopefully I learned that yesterday, y'all, and, I, and I, I feel pretty educated. But again, the point is to inspire you, not to make you mad and go out there, but to say what is locally around you that you can also step into. And I wrote some thoughts down to close out because I wanted not just to come in and say things. I want it to be things that are crisp and clear and hopefully useful um, as you leave this conversation. And we can have more Q&A later. One, we are creators of tech. You're already in the house of tech. I just told you to go do some homework and learn the history of our technology and, and the contributions from thousands of years ago, to be crisp. So you already are innovation. You just need to create it, number one. Number two, we need more leaders in technology. So go from being a consumer, even a contributor, to leading what it should be. We should all be putting our signature on the future of tech. And you, if you want, you can start today. A little bit of fear, but with a lot of courage, right? And then the last thing I want to close out is don't do it alone. Bring a posse, bring a friend. You know, we got the Capital One crew here, which is one of the delights of why I come here, also escaping my job. But I love just being with my people, right? But we also come up with great, brilliant ideas over a drink or in the hallway. And so I encourage you, 
introverts speaking to other introverts, just find that one or two person who you can sort of vibe with and keep going. And then to close, I'm gonna say it. You are the disruption. Innovation comes from disruption. And only you can solve your own problems. And so I, I ask you to think about why did you come here, like he was saying. You didn't come here for the same old to go back to the same old, yeah. right? You came here because you wanted a new idea, maybe meet a new person, hear something interesting, write down some gems. But the real question is, what are you going to innovate next? And I look forward to hearing about it because we want more of that. We want more leadership, we want more ideas. And then look for those places where you are safe so that you can continue to thrive. And that's what I wish for you. That's why I'm telling the universe. Yeah. So it's gonna hopefully happen. So I will, I'll let you wrap us up. Um, I, I'm not even gonna say much on this. I'm just gonna pick on that word, disruption. Um, I, I have a background in mobility. So if my examples keep going back to mobility companies, please forgive me. Um, Uber disrupted the taxi industry because the taxi industry did not want to innovate. Disruption will happen. The question is, would you disrupt yourself or would you let others disrupt you? Mm. Disruption will happen. It's how we as a society have moved forward. It's gonna happen. The real question you have to answer is, would you let others disrupt you or would you disrupt yourself and move forward? I'm gonna clap for that. <laughs>